guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show, where I'm, I think I'm still, my name is Kirk Beer and I'm your host, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over. And I'm crazy excited because you're going to meet somebody who is brilliant at helping us rethink the whole financial engine of a dental practice. Anne-Marie Gorska, who has become a great friend of ours, the ACT Dental community. And if you haven't read her books, I'm just telling you, you got to read her books. Now, I know you guys listen to a lot of stuff that we publish, but I'm telling you, this is phenomenal stuff. So you're going to want to stick around, grab a pen and hit the share button and grab some paper too, because you're going to love what she's going to share. Now, before we get started, I always like to welcome, you know, a lot of you joined during the COVID conference and it's really been fun. There's been a blessing in this whole um this whole disruption that we've had, we've gotten to know quite a few people. And a lot of you are dental students or young dentists. And when you came aboard, you're like, what the heck is this podcast thing? So I get these all day long. What is this? I'm like, just keep showing up. So here's what I'm going to say. If you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, I don't care. Do me a favor. Go down to that little button. You see that button right there that says subscribe. Just click the subscribe button because you're going to see Every single week, I'm going to bring you a brand new expert in dentistry to give you some best practices, some new ways to think about your dental practice so you can have a better practice and a better life. And I don't want you to miss out. So keep showing up. Number two, some of you ask, what the heck do we do? And I'll tell you what we do. We're a coaching company. And I love this stuff so much. We do a lot of education, but here's exactly what we do. It's usually around the biggest three issues in your practice, time, money, or people. So if you're a practice owner and you're like, you know what? I'm struggling because my team isn't getting along or I don't have the best team or a couple of them aren't getting along in between. That's what we do. Improve the culture. Or if you don't like writing off 35% or 45% and giving it to the PPOs every year and you don't want to do that anymore, that's what we do. Or if you're thinking, hey, I don't want to keep working in evenings and Saturdays and doing all that weird stuff. That's what we do. So check us out at actdental.com where we just focus on one thing, helping you enjoy going to work and your team so that you have a better practice and a better life. So join us over there and check that out. Speaking of enjoying going to work, the woman that I'm going to introduce you today, I think you, Amory, I think you just enjoy going to work. You love this profession. And would you work eight to one today? Nice little day. Yeah. You probably <laughs> changed a whole bunch of lives type of a thing. Yeah, thank you. I just came from my office. Uh, this week I worked uh, Tuesday, 9.30 to 5, Wednesday, 9.30 to 5, Thursday, 10.30 to 6, and today I worked 8 to 1. And I absolutely love what I do. I, I think dentistry is still the best profession you can be in. I'm an orthodontist. Um, I love my life. I love my practice. And I'm in practice uh, dental management uh, practice heaven. So, um, I'm very, uh, encouraging to everyone listening to this podcast to, uh, work on their practice and enjoy dentistry because they're very, very fortunate to be in dentistry. Absolutely. And you become like a, a mentor to me and I, we haven't even met in person really. Um, I just love your, so I'm going to say this. If you guys haven't picked up her books, you need to pick up her books. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's a lot of books out there from dentists that write. No, her stuff is really good. Actually, I've got it. I've got it over here. But it's really good stuff. So today we're going to be talking about a different way to look at your practice and how to fuel it. Now, she hasn't even told me, and I'm already curious. And if you haven't listened to the prior podcast that we've done, she already helped you think differently about the treatment coordinator, but Anne Marie, give us a little pre uh, preview of what we're going to be talking about today. Well, today we're going to talk about the final part of treatment coordination, 
which is after you've uh, started the patient, you've met the patient, you've converted the case, now you are engaged in the delivery of care. And part of that is that uh, on your end, as a dental provider, you're going to be providing clinical excellence, outstanding customer service, and a great patient experience. And on the patient's end, their side of it is they're going to be a cooperative patient. They're going to pay you. And then at the end of it all, they're going to refer you one or two new patients. Those are the three objectives of what are you going to get in return for your outstanding treatment that you're going to give your patient. And so today we're going to talk about the second aspect of that. Well, the first aspect, a cooperative patient, but the second aspect is that the patient is going to pay you, you're going to collect the money, and at the end of it all, you're going to get them to refer you one or two new patients. Yeah. So if I'm li listening with a little pessimism saying, like, yes. this, this is a big ask, you know, this is, yes. those are some big things that you're going to promise us today. But Amory, if you get these things right, you can see that they absolutely work. Dentistry yes. is one of the best investments a human being can make. You just have to believe it as a team. And then you can start to put these these things in place. So where do we start? Like, Well, you don't believe it as a team. You live it as a team. Right. It, you create your own success as a team. And I, one of my favorite sayings with my team is, it's one team, one score. Uh, when we lift the boat, we're all in the boat together. Right. So um, that's why I think the uh, weekly team meeting and the open book management and the sharing of your numbers is so vital to working as a team and, and reaching your goals. Right. Because uh, everyone knows the goals. Everyone knows what actions they need to take. And you celebrate your successes together. Yeah. Can I ask yeah. you a question? And it makes it more fun. Yeah. I know what you're saying is true. But let me ask you, why don't dentists do it that way? Um, I have no idea. But, you know, I, I think um, I've been in dentistry 31 years. And I myself has, have evolved uh, from where I started. Um, I think that when I started my practice, I would have one team meeting a month. Mm. And that was better than no team meetings a month. But when you have one team meeting a month, you tend to focus on lag measures, meaning you look at the previous month, you say, how did we do? Uh, you can't take any action on the previous month. Right. Uh, and then maybe you plan for the current month or the next month. And then you meet again the next month to see how you did. After a few years, I went to two meetings a month because I felt like, well, if I'm going to accomplish things this month, if I'm going to work on lead measures or things that we can take action on right now, today, then we need to go over them more often. So then I went to two meetings a month. And then finally, I realized having a weekly meeting one hour every week is really the best investment you can make with your team because you can go over all the scores, all your, all your numbers. Everyone can report their KPIs. You can say, what are we working on? What's our top priority? And you have the ability to change things on a very fast pace, like that day, right? So, yeah. I have so, so many I, like, when do you do yours? When do you, like, okay, we do ours every Thursday from okay. noon to 1 p.m. And then we take lunch after that. We do ours every Thursday. And um, I, I have to admit to you, I don't do a formal morning huddle. Because uh, for, for myself personally, um, I can't accomplish very much in 15 minutes. I mean, basically, the only thing you could accomplish in 15 minutes is going over the schedule 
and maybe reporting um, some emergency for that day. But it's not like you're really going to take initiative and work on projects and things like that, discussing it at a morning huddle. Um, I have my morning huddle with my front office uh, financial coordinator as I drive to the office. I talk to her every single morning on the drive to the office. And I ask her what's on the schedule, what's up for today, what's new, what do we need to accomplish today? And I personally have my morning huddle with her. Now, if she needed to go over something with the team, she could do that right when the team gets there for five or 10 minutes. But it's not like we're going to accomplish our management system review at a morning huddle. Right, right. Very cool. So take us through the concepts. I don't want to get sidetracked because I love the details yes. of what you do. And I have so many questions. I could spend three hours with you. Well, and today we're going to talk about something that hardly anyone in dentistry talks about. And I know this from experience because for 30 some odd years, I have looked for financial courses, cash management, cash flow courses. And there truly are none. I mean, I found one once and it was canceled twice. Mm. So the only financial courses you're really going to find are from accountants when you can find them. So today we're going to talk about money and we're going to talk about collections. And I want to start the podcast by getting your listeners to think in a new way. By thinking of the equation, collections equals profits plus expenses. Now, you might say, Dr. Gorska, why are you so focused on collections? Well, because that's your bottom line. That's the fuel of the engine of your office. You'll hear a lot of dentists talk about production, 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 production. But um, that's not really your fuel. Your your fuel is your cash. And if you're only thinking about production, um, maximizing production and not focusing on your collections, you might be wasting time doing things that you're not profitable in, or maybe you're not getting paid for. And it might not be the best business model for you. So I'm going to I'm going to start in just looking right at collections. That that really is the important focus of your office. Wow. So already my brain is confused because yeah. this is a formula. <laughs> you know, you're you're going to frame it up in a way that's probably and and tell me tell us what it is and how did you how did you come up with this? Well, um I think the first 10 years of my practice life, uh, I was very focused on production. Um, but then the older you get, the more you realize um, to be profitable and to truly um, work in the most uh, efficient, smart way that you can. Uh, I think it's a more direct focus for you to look at your collections and understand that collections equals profit, which is your salary. And I include my team's salary in there as well, because if my team is getting a raise, I'm getting a raise. We're in it together. Right. And then um, your profits are determined by how high your expenses are. So it is your goal to minimize your expenses as much as possible. Now, I'm not talking about uh, skimping on value. If there are certain materials that you need that are the highest quality materials, I'm not talking about uh, cutting expenses by cutting quality. I'm talking about cutting expenses by cutting waste, by cutting uh, shelf life, by cutting things sitting on the shelf that you're not using or may never use. Uh, that And also price checking. If you can get the same product from a different vendor and it's exactly the same thing, why would you pay more money for it? Right. So um, 
let's start with collections. If if you might want to start there. Yeah, I will, I'll go wherever you want to go. I'm, I'm okay. curious. So collections, uh, that is the fuel of your office. You really need to report your collections to your team um, and look at your collections, your reports, your accounts receivable, uh, 30, 60, 90 days accounts receivable, your insurance aging, and then also look at your uh, write-offs and look at your uh, discounts or courtesies if you're offering anything like that. And um, think of your collections as a bathtub and uh, your patient payments go in the bathtub and um, your insurance payments go in the bathtub. But there is that um, drain and your um, write-offs and uh, discounts or courtesies, that's letting the money out of the drain. So the more you let out, the less collections there are there. Right. So um, I have to brag a little bit, Kirk. Um, when I wrote the book, I discussed in the book how a few years ago I got a new accountant. His name is Basim Michael. He's in Fresno, California. If you're looking for an excellent dental accountant to have on as a guest, I think he's one of the best I would love or it. the best that I know of. And when I started working with him, the first thing he told me was, Dr. Gorsica, get your own mail. Do not have the front desk get your mail. You get your own mail. You go through everything in your mail, every invoice, every insurance payment, and you look over that mail and then you give it to your financial coordinator. So I started doing that. And it was quite an educational process for me because immediately i found a lot of surprises i found some services that i had ended that i was still being charged for that i didn't even know about i found some invoices that had errors in them i found invoices that weren't even for my office they were for the office next door or for another orthodontic office and also, I could see the insurance payments coming in. So it gave me a really good feel about cash flow. It also gave me a very good understanding of the insurance payments because I get my insurance payments by check. Uh, I don't do um, electronic uh, deposit into the bank account. Okay. So uh, with that, it really helped me tremendously uh, get my budget together. And uh, it made me realize immediately, and I put this in the book because I want every dentist to realize this, that just to turn the lights on in your office, before you even pay anyone's salary uh, or pay your rent or pay your uh, mortgage on your condo, whatever, you need about $10,000 a month just to keep the systems going. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Um, your electric bill, your internet bill, your website, your software, your imaging, uh, storage, whatever. All those things that you pay for on a monthly basis, your fixed costs. In my office, and I'm probably the average office, it's 10000 a month. So those fixed costs, uh, you most of those services are um, automatic uh, credit card payments um, on your credit card because most of those services like the website, internet, all that, they want a credit card. Now, if you're using a credit card, the best credit card you can get is from your bank. So my credit card is from Bank of, uh, excuse me, it's from Wells Fargo. And should anything go wrong with that, which I hope it never does, because I always pay my credit card bill first, but if it ever did go wrong, uh, it's 7.5% interest versus a commercial credit card um, is 
between, uh, I think it starts maybe at 12.99% interest and it can go up as high as 21% interest. So you, you've got to get the best credit card that you can. Um, another wonderful thing that I did recently that has been very helpful for my office is um, I got my ordering assistant, Jolene, I got her her own credit card at uh, the Wells Fargo. And her credit card has a limit on it of $1,500. Now, the reason I think that's wonderful is that when Jolene is paying for things with the credit card, first of all, she has a better feel for how much things cost. She has a better feel for how big the orders are. And uh, she has a limit. So uh, variable costs uh, are the next category of things that... You want to have a control on your variable costs and under and a feel for how much you're spending on that. Right, right. Because you, you want to learn together too in this whole process. Right. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So um, now collections. Um, when I was writing the book, I interviewed um, Andy Grover Cleveland the owner of Dental Ninjas. Mm -hmm. And he told me that the average dental office in the United States of America has $50,000 in accounts receivable, 30, 60, 90 days accounts receivable. And at that time, I, I wrote in my book, I was at, uh, I think, $18,000, and I had 17 patients that owed me $18,000. And I thought I was doing pretty well. But I have to brag that last week, my financial coordinator at the front desk, believe it or not, she got our 30-day accounts receivable to zero, zero. Like like zero, zero? Zero dollars owed. I actually took the report. I had her autograph it. I put a gold seal on it, the seal of excellence, and I framed it and I, hang, I hung it in my office wall of fame. That's awesome. Because I know she worked on that report for about two years to make that level of excellence. Well, and that was, and, my, that would be my first question is what was the secret? How did you get okay, there? I'm going to tell you the secret in a minute. I checked my report today, as of today, May, May 21st, I had six patients today that owe me uh, $2,000. Uh, that is past due. And as I was leaving the office, I actually wanted to do the podcast for my office because I wanted Lindsay to come and talk to you. But she said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I'm too shy. So I, I said, okay, Lindsay, I'm going to brag about you then. So I said, Lindsay, what would you tell the listeners is the most important thing for collecting the money? And she, she, she has a few secrets that I'll tell you about in a minute. But she said, I think the most important thing is knowing your patients and letting your patients know we are here to help you. We are not here to put you in a financial bind. Uh, we don't want to do any service that you're unable to pay us for. And if you're behind on your payment, tell us why and tell us how we can help you work it out. And she said she thinks that is one of her secrets to being able to collect the money, that she knows her patients, they know that she's going to call them, and they pay her. Now, um, there are two secrets that I wrote in my book. Um, I put them in the category of the queen of collections and the king of collections. And these are two real people that I know who are legends in our community, and they are people that have inspired Lindsay as well. And these are their two secrets. Um, the queen of collections, her name is Rhonda, and she works at our computer, which is a computer company that we deal with in our community. It's in Concord, California. And if you have 
an invoice from our computer, you can be guaranteed that if that payment is 30 days, one hour past due, okay, 30 days, it needs to be paid, and you're one hour late, okay, you are going to get a call from Rhonda, like clockwork. And dare I say, it's actually a pleasant experience getting a call from Rhonda. Because what she says is, she'll say, hello, it's that time again. And I'm like, oh, Rhonda, how are you? Um, here, let me get my credit card. I'm going to give you a payment right now. How much do I owe you? And she'll say, <clears throat> whatever, you pay. And I say, Rhonda, gosh, you are so good at collections. <clears throat> Tell me. How many people do you have on your collections list? And she'll say, well, I had five, but now I have four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she is on top of it. And I admire her. And I told Lindsay, you know, be like Rhonda. Rhonda is really good. Well, Lindsay says this. Don't wait until your patient is 30 days past due. Call them at 21 days past due because you don't want them going on the 30 day past due list. Right. They have a date when their payment is due in our office, the patient picks a date and um, <clears throat> we use electronic fund transfer usually. So we can see in their contract that their date is the first of the month or whatever. And um if we don't get payment or let's say their credit card de 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 declines or uh, insufficient funds or whatever, uh, we call them immediately as soon as we get a decline. But should the payment not come through on the date that it's due, we don't wait 30 days. We call at 21 days to let them know it didn't come through. And uh, sometimes there's a reason. You know, they might have changed their credit card. They might have changed their bank account, whatever. So that's the first tip. Um, the second tip is from, uh, I'm going to tell you about the king of collections. And that's a guy in my community. His name is Will. And he owns a business, uh, Minuteman Press, where I get a lot of postcards and forms and things done from my office. And his invoice says, uh, payment due upon receipt. And I know if I get an invoice from, from Minuteman Press, every single week until that invoice is paid, I am going to get that invoice again. Mm -hmm. And the second I get one of their invoices, I'm like, I'm going to pay this right now because I know I'm going to get another one in one week if I don't pay it. And uh, he is excellent at collections, you know, uh, and he's the one I told you, Kirk, that he said his daughter works for um, Deloitte, which is yes. one of the biggest uh, management consulting firms in the world. And uh, he's a smart guy. Now, there are other tricks. And this is a trick I learned uh, myself. When you send out your invoices, let's say you don't get payment. So you send out an invoice that you print out of your computer system. Buy the magic pink stickers from Smart Practice. Now, what is the magic pink sticker? The magic pink sticker is the fluorescent pink sticker that says, uh, friend, friendly reminder, your payment is past due. Then there's another magic pink sticker that says, it's bigger, it's a really big one. It says, your payment is 60 days past due. Uh, we actually cross that out. We'll write the exact number of days. It might you know, be 61 or something. And then if you really, really want your patient to pay, have the doctor sign the invoice. Wow. So uh, I would write, Thank you for your payment, Dr. Anne-Marie Gorsica. That works like magic. You will be paid immediately because it's coming from the doctor. For sure. So, um, you know, I'll tell you, Kirk, I've been in practice 31 years. I remember one time uh, about 15 years ago, 
I had someone at my front desk uh, resign. And she had been doing collections for me for about four years. And we printed her report and we looked at it. We said, oh my gosh, what is this? There was a time I had 102 patients owed me money. What we did that day, we did not wait a minute. We said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a phone-a-thon, <laughs> dialing for dollars, phone-a-thon tonight from five to six. Mm. We're going to take this list. We're going to divide it among three people. Uh, so-and-so, you take A through L. So-and-so, you take L through P. And so-and-so, you get P through Z. And we are going to call all these patients tonight. We'll be done in one hour. And in one hour, you can call 102 patients and you can get your payment. And if you don't get them on the phone, send them the statement, put on the magic pink sticker, have the doctor sign it. By the end of the month, you'll get the payment. Yeah. Now, you so, certainly don't want it to get to that point. Let's be don't. clear about that. Right? You don't. Now... Uh, we do electronic fund transfer, and uh, that is one of the best things you can ever do. That uh, I'm an orthodontist, so you know I'm charging people six, six to seven thousand dollars, and uh, they're not going to necessarily write me a check for that. So they're going to have payment plans, and the payment plans go over two years. So we do offer uh, interest-free financing, but they need to sign up for electronic fund transfer that every month, either uh, their credit card is going to be charged the money automatically transfers into our bank account, or they can use a debit card or they can use their uh, checking account or bank account. But we have it automatically set up. Um, I learned this years ago from an orthodontist who had a tremendous practice and a wonderful collection rate. And I asked him, you know, how do you do it? And he said, oh, it's the electronic fund transfer is the way to go. And I use Vanco system, which is very, very low cost. I think the setup fee per patient is like five dollars and uh, they don't they don't <laughs> take any interest or anything. So it's just a fabulous service. Wow. And it's called Vanco? Vanco, V-A-N-C-O. It's not very well known. I mean, a lot of churches use it. A lot of nonprofits use it. Uh, but they don't take any money. You know, I mean, there are other finance companies that you can uh, do your financing through, but some of them take as much as 9% of your money. Right. And the other thing we use is care credit. So for Invisalign, uh, we do not offer financing for Invisalign if they want Invisalign treatment. Uh, they either pay in full uh, and get a, a small discount or they do care credit. Right. And we love care credit. And I'm just curious, how do you use it or how do you discuss it with patients? Well, uh, we just tell them that uh, because the Invisalign is an in, inexpensive in product for them to get. It's expensive for us to get it because the lab bill is so high. Uh, we just tell them we don't do financing for that. We want to keep the price down payment reasonable. So for that reason, we use care credit so that they really can start their Invisalign treatment even with no down payment. They just need to sign up for care credit and take care of the balance through care credit. At their own terms, they can do one year, two years, three years, five years. They can choose what monthly payment they want. Cool. Very cool. Now, um, let's talk about um, courtesies, courtesies, which are discounts. But we don't like to right. use that word. It's right. a courtesy that you might do for someone who uh, maybe it's the second child in treatment. Uh, maybe it's um, 
a family member, maybe it's your best friend from high school, who knows? But there are times where a dentist or an orthodontist wants to give someone a courtesy. Um, you've got to really watch that because you can get carried away with that and to a point where you could be actually losing money, uh, giving too much away. So in our office, uh, we're an orthodontic office. We always have patients asking us every day, oh, can you give me a discount? We say, yes, we can. If you pay in full today, you can get $300 courtesy on your price. If you pay in full today. Yeah. Do a lot of people take advantage of that? Some do. Yes, some, some do. Yeah. But, you know, you have to also be willing to walk away from a case, you know, because I'm an orthodontist. I'll never forget. I had this one family. A woman brought me three children and she wanted me to start all three of her children. And I gave her the estimate. And uh, I gave her the $300 discount and she said, that's not enough. I said, oh, okay. So then I thought about it a little bit and I thought, you know, I really would like to start these three kids and starting three kids at the same time. That's really tough. And maybe I should give her a little more of a discount. So I kind of compromised myself a little bit and I did give her a little more off. I, I said, you know, if you start all three kids and you pay cash, uh, I'll, I'll give you, uh, you'll make it 15, um, we'll make it $5,000 per case, which is really a big discount in my office. And <laughs> surprisingly, that still wasn't enough for her. And I'm like, wow, I told her I can't even do it for less than that. She did find someone to do all three kids for $10,000. That's $3,333 a case. I just said to myself, they're losing money on that for sure. And it was not a private office. It was a corporate chain. And uh, that orthodontist doesn't care if they lose money, you know, but I, I can tell you they lost money. There's just no way you're going to make money uh, charging that fee. Right. So you've got to watch the discounts and um, keep track of it and see uh, how much you're giving a month and uh, try to keep it to a minimum because that's all profit that you are losing. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for collections. You want to collect um Oh, here's another trick. This is for orthodontists. I don't know if general dentists can use this or not, but um, I have a debond letter that the day the patient gets their braces off, first of all, I want them to tell me that they are happy with the orthodontic treatment and that they want their braces off. I don't want to be telling them I'm taking your braces off and them telling me, well, you know, this one lateral, I wish it would come down a little bit more. No, they need to tell me before we take their braces off. So I have them sign. I so-and-so uh, have been told that Dr. Gorska recommends that my braces come off. I am happy with my orthodontic treatment and I am requesting that my braces be removed. I am also aware that my final payment of $250 is due and that my outstanding insurance is $335. Should for any reason this not be paid by my insurance company, I am also responsible for this amount. And then they sign it. Because I want them to know the day their braces come off, how much they owe us if the contract isn't over. And that if the insurance doesn't pay, that they're responsible for that balance. Now, there is another magic pink sticker from Smart Practice. And I love this magic pink sticker. It says, my insurance has paid in full. Uh, the rest of this balance uh, will be paid directly by you. 
So there is a sticker when the insurance, you get the notice payment in full. And if there's a little balance, whatever that might be, uh, the patient needs to pay that final balance. Now, it always surprises me when I hear general dentists say, oh, the patients won't do treatment because they don't have insurance and the insurance won't pay for it and all that kind of stuff. Only 33% of my patients have dental insurance. The rest of them pay cash for orthodontics. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And in orthodontics is never paid in full by insurance. I mean, the most I could ever get is maybe 60% payment, but uh, it never ever pays in full for orthodontics. So it's interesting. The orthodontists just expect that the patient is going to pay for their treatment. We, we don't really rely on insurance um, for the patient making a decision. Now, we do EOBs. We do pre-authorizations to let the patient know exactly what their balance is going to be. But um, if someone comes in and says, I have no insurance, we just say, oh, that's fine. You know, we offer 0% financing. If you like our payment plan, great. If you don't, then you can do care credit and you can spread it out over a longer period of time. Very cool. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, so that's pretty much collections. You know, you want to collect what is owed to you. And uh, you, if, if you, if the person at your front desk does not have the ability to say, will that be cash check or credit card today? today. They should not be at your front desk. You yeah, cannot that, have a person like that. If they cannot ask the patient for payment that day, then they cannot be a financial coordinator. Yeah. Go they a little further on that. Cause you shared that with me at one time and I love that. And I've shared it so many times and people are like, that's so true. Well, tell us why. Well, you, you have to be able to ask for money. You have to, I mean, I go to my physician's office before I even see my doctor, I go to the front desk, I check in and the physician's office says to me, uh, your co-payment for today is this amount of money. And I write my check and I give them the check. And I haven't even seen the doctor yet. Yeah. So there's no reason why the person at the front desk can't say, uh, your payment for today is this much money. Um, you owe us this much money uh, well, before you're seen, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. It's just business. It is business. And I yeah. know I, I, I could keep you for a whole nother hour on this because of all the nuances. But like, I want to like, let's, let's bring this home as we, Get ready to close. Like, how important? If I'm a young dentist, what yeah. do you want to say to me on this topic about? Let's say I'm 32 and I'm listening to this, and I'm like, "Yeah, but Dr. Gorska, you don't understand." What would you want to tell me about the next three decades of practice? The if next I three decades. Well, um, I want you to remember that um, that equation: collections equal profit plus expenses. Now. Profit is your paycheck, and it is also, I include in there the, the my employees' paychecks because we're on the same team. I don't want them to think I'm taking money and getting a raise when they're not getting a raise. We're all in it together. Right. And um, the expenses, um, you, you want to keep a track of your monthly expenses you want to be under budget. You want all your invoices to be paid. You don't want to put things on your credit card. And you need to go over the invoices with your team. You know, I at my team meeting, I actually bring my invoices. I had my team meeting yesterday. And I said, you know, our bills are paid. We just have, I want you to be aware we have three Invisalign invoices for June <laughs> that have to be paid, all right? So we're just thinking ahead. That's the next thing on our list that we're going to do. Um, and I want them to be aware of it. I want them to know that uh, how much things cost, how we pay for things, and that we work on it as a team. And um, one of the best books you could ever read about uh, cash flow is Profit First mm -hmm. by Mike Michalowicz. 
Yes. And one of the things I loved that he said in that book is order the small plates. Okay. When you go to a restaurant, you have a temptation to order the big plate. Don't order the big plate. Order the small plate. Make sure you eat it. And if you do eat it, you can always order a second plate. Well, it's the same in your office. When the rep comes in and they want to sell you a six-month supply of something, and they tell you, if you order six months of braces, uh, you can get 10 cases free or whatever. You do not want things sitting on the shelf that you are paying for because there is a cost, uh, opportunity cost of that money that you could be using to put into your 401k or, you know, paying off uh, some loan or debt or there's an opportunity cost to where you put your money. So um, the most profitable companies have a shelf life on product of two weeks. And I tell my ordering person, I want you to order for the next two weeks. And I really don't want orders over $500. You know, anything over $500 for me is a big surprise. I yeah. certainly don't want orders over $1,000, 2000 3000 6000 10000 I mean, that's a bad day for me to get yeah. something like that. <laughs> now, um, a young dentist, I want to tell you a story. Um, I have a solo practice. Um, I've been in practice 31 years. Um, I have four team members. They're all employed full time. They're all highly compensated. And I have a very good salary and I'm very happy with my lifestyle and how much I'm paid. I go out to lunch with a lot of dentists and I'll never forget. I went out to lunch with this one dentist once and he was kind of a cocky guy, you know, and I sat down with him. Here's little Anne Marie in her orthodontic practice. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, my practice grosses $3 million. And he employs like eight dentists and he's got some specialists and he's got like 20 assistants and he works six days a week. And I just looked at him and I said, well, just tell me, how much is your salary? (laughs) Now, I'm not that shy. Right. Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, oh, I cannot believe you asked me that. I said, I'm just curious, like a big entrepreneur like you, what kind of salary are you pulling for a big practice like that? It says 180,000. Oh, you're kidding. I'm like, like, so you're employing eight people working six days a week and you're earning less than someone in their own little practice, three and a half days a week, four employees, no headaches, perfectly happy, wonderful lifestyle. Why are you doing this? Why don't you just go open your own little shop, take care of yourself and pay yourself a higher salary? And he says, you know, I ask myself that all the time. But he didn't, (laughs) he asked himself, but he didn't answer it. So to the young dentist, I would think about what is your business model? And I want to tell you, the private practice, solo practice, business model of the elite practice, it is still a very viable, profitable, desirable lifestyle and model. No now, question. one thing I do not want to do, I do not want to work for corporate dentistry. You know why? No freedom and no equity. Right. So let's and back up would, there. Oh, go. You yeah. go. You go. Well, I worked for a group practice once, and it's fine. You can use the corporate model as a stepping stone when you get out of school and you don't have a job. Fine. Go and work in five or six different corporate offices work a day here, work a day there, work a day here, you know, that's fine. You can do that for two years, three years, five years, whatever. But your goal should be eventually, hopefully by age 35, maybe start thinking about opening your own practice, go to the bank, take out the loan, just do it. You will not regret it. 
Well, I got, I, you're, I'm totally speaking your language or I'm picking up what you're putting down in a big way. Cause number one, I tell my kids this, the only job security you'll ever have is entrepreneurialism. So think, just think about that for number one. Number two, you're exactly right. And I've been doing, I haven't been doing this as long as you, but I don't care what people produce anymore. It tells me nothing. I just want to know. It tells me nothing. nothing. I, I remember I met a very famous management consultant once. Uh, and his first question for me was, how many staff do I have? And I was like, why would you even ask me that question? It doesn't matter how much, how many staff I have. What matters is if I'm profitable, right? Isn't that what matters? Well, yeah. And I, I totally agree with you. And one more thing that we haven't even talked about is that yes. time, time is the new rich. So that den that you're talking about working six days a week, I guarantee you works well north of 230 days a year. Well, where can, you, our- um, can you imagine the headaches? Our top producers constantly revolving door of young dentists, revolving door of specialists. I mean, that is not the ideal model for a profitable dentist, right? But it's a model. It exists. I mean, uh, there are lots of models uh, out there. Um, But you've got to think about what lifestyle do you want? Amen, sister. Amen. So you are the so, best. Now, wait, I know we, I got to run. You have to run and I have to run. Actually, I got to run to a baseball game because my son and that's, and, but we're going to be back again and again and again. I want people to read your books. I want, tell us where to find this stuff. Okay. Before. Well, um, here's my book. It's called take action. And we actually only got through the collections part. We talked about profit a little bit. We talked about reducing your expenses a little bit. Um, But um, I wanna just end with this. At the end of it all, in the treatment coordination circle of life, when you give uh, exceptional, excellent clinical care, outstanding customer service and a great patient experience and all of your collection processes have run seamlessly the day you take the you finish the treatment you cement the crown you take off the braces or whatever you're going to thank your patient you're going to say i hope you've been happy with our level of customer service if you have please consider giving us a five star review And here are two uh, business cards or cards, whatever you want to give them. Uh, We would be really honored if you know anyone who needs braces or Invisalign, uh, please refer your family and friends to our office. We'd love more patients just like you. Love that. Love that. And then you get to start all over again. (laughs) You're You're the best. But that is the treatment coordination process. It starts with the initial contact of the new patient, the onboarding process, the delivery of services, and then hopefully every patient refers one or two patients back to you. And that way your number one referral source will always be your existing patients. Yeah, you are just so great. And we're (laughs) only scratching the surface here because... Um, if you're listening to this, make sure you check out the prior podcast that we've done. Also, I want you to check out her books. I'm going to have her back again and again and again. I am just so crazy grateful to have you uh, on the podcast and to call you my friend. I, uh, I always learned so many good things. So thank you so well, much. Thank you so much. And it's always a thrill and a pleasure for me to talk to you about practice management. Oh, you're the best. So stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for listening to the best practice show. I That's a mouthful today. But um, if you enjoyed today, like I know you did, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for things that you guys want to see. We'll line them up and I'll get Anne Marie back and we'll ask her the tough questions because she knows what she knows the answers. And until we see you guys next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Mm-hmm.